Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to Tier No, in which we're currently playing with Bobby Kennedy, in which we are trying to do the Economic Opportunity Act. So, like I said at the end of the last episode, I don't like doing this, but I basically had to use some console commands to make sure that we could pass the act, just because at this point, we're so deep into the campaign, and I've literally split this campaign into two with my Glenn playthrough. I want to see if we can just do everything possible to be successful with RRFK and his beliefs and the center MPP. So as you can see, all 11 Republican senators support our bill, 3 out of the 20 Democrats don't su support it, 34 of our own party members support it, and 5 of the far right also support it. But now we're sitting down with Chavez. RFK has traveled to LA, California to meet with a local, local labor leader and LNPP activist Cesar Chavez, the leader of the Latino American civil rights community and organizer for the poorly paid and treatment, treated farm workers of California. His influence within the NPP is so is huge, it's so imperative that the imperative will work with Chavez if he wants to get his agenda through Congress. Of course, it could be tricky to work with Chavez, who has positioned himself to the left of even Bobby Kennedy. He may see the president as not doing enough for going too slow in efforts to reform the American economy and society with hundreds and thousands of supporters throughout the U.S., but focus especially in the Southwest. His influence could sink or swim in the efforts to reform America. But the only way to get Chavez to support is to talk to him and convince him. Thank you for meeting with me, Caesar. And he supports the president. After a long hour meeting between RFK and Chavez, the labor leader has given a short speech to reporters and announced that he supports the president's goals and agenda. While I cannot deny that there's always more to be done to improve the lives and rights of Latinos and all Americans, Chavez told the reporters, I believe that President Kennedy has our best interests at heart and we will fight for all workers. This is just a small step on the way to true equality and justice, but we support the president's efforts to advance our rights. This is the best outcome possible from the meeting, as now many labor leaders in the, NC in the CNPP and supporters are vocally supporting the RFK's new acts and laws as Chavez's full-throated endorsement is just a sign they needed. Uh, it can be done? I have no idea what that means. I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. What do you mean they don't help us? What do you mean? I guess that makes sense, seeing as uh, the far left MPP has literally no senators. So, oh man, I, I really don't like using consequence. I've used them once in this campaign, like I said in the last episode, but I apologize. And also, I apologize for this campaign for right now, just because at this point, when I'm recording this, I have to record stuff a little bit ahead of time because I don't have enough time to record everything while there's going to be an update and this mod will not be no longer playable at the time of this recording. So. Or at least probably. So I apologize about that. The 72 election debates Jackson versus McGovern. While urbanite machines exchange deals for votes and for communities arrange donation drives and canvases as they always had, America's voting public speculated the quadrennial tradition's most recent addition to the comfort of homes and nations at over. At the Walnut Street Theater in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, National Progressive Candidate Henry Scoop Jackson enraged his Republican-Democrat counterpart George McGovern in, in the first of a series of TV presidential debates covering topics both foreign and domestic below is an excerpt from the heated exchange that night or engage not enraged jackson said i notice you're fond of preparing your speeches with appeals to mankind's good nature give peace a chance as it were incidentally i've also recorded recalled hearing roughly the same twice before first from neville chamberlain and second from none other man than joe kennedy you can imagine how history has treated their naivety since the presidency may demand no small amount of risk taking from his acumen, but even I'm not foolhardy enough to attempt fate a third time. Are you then, Mr. McGovern? And he replied, Have we fallen so far from grace that we now criticize policy out of superstition, Mr. Jackson? My boy speaks with a lament of families that have lost fathers, brothers, and sons to wars a thousand miles from home. I tired as I do of noble crusades dreamt by old men with a nation of young men to live vicariously through. You say I'm naive, uncaring for the evils that profit off goodwill. I say the future which America's... Be bereaved dream is worth fighting for despite these evils and nothing more than there's nothing more American than fighting the good fight and I apologize if you hear anything in the background so my apologies once again my family is a little loud ooh which one do we want Jackson ooh Jackson is the NPP I still want the NPP to win so that's why we use cons commands but at this point we might as well do it right we just want to push a certain agenda and in the future, we might play with McGovern, but after this campaign and the one with Glenn, I'm going to stay away from America for a while. The Godfather releases. Acclaimed director Francis Ford Coppola's newest, biggest feature film, The Godfather, struck like lightning at theaters across America. Based on Mario Puzo's best-selling crime novel for the same name, The Godfather tells the story of the Corleone family of New York City's most powerful organized crime syndicates. It's Don Vito Corleone. Corleone. 
As an honorable and respected Sicilian immigrant, his position among New York's five families is always being threatened by the growing heroin trade. This conflict spires into a bloody gang war which claims Sonny, Vito's eldest child. After Vito promises to end the war, his second son Michael, a veteran of Scotland, begins to take control of the Corleone Empire. In 55, Vito dies and Michael exacts his revenge on the five families in a vicious series of assassinations, establishing his status as a new godfather of the Mafia. The Godfather's garnered, garnered rave reviews. Critics around the country are praising the performances of the legendary Marlon and Brando as Vito and the budding young Al Pacino as Michael. Others have acclaimed the score, editing, and themes of immigration and family, seeing as a parable for America's complicated relationship to Italy. Made already calling The Godfather the best film of 72, it would seem that Mr. Capella has made Hollywood an offer it can't refuse. Ave Maria. Gratia plena. plena. Cool. And now we have an annual deficit, but whatever. Because I've still got to get political power some way. 0.63, not bad. The higher calling. This is the right thing to do. Alfred Lincoln was used to, be, to the cold, but never the hunger. As a wind rushed in from Lake Michigan at the soup kitchen on Lake Paulina Street, chilling him to his bones, he cupped his bowl delicately as he turned it into the shoulder, not wanting to waste a single drop before he could guzzle it down. He didn't make eye contact with the young woman who had handed him the bowl. She was younger than the usual crowd manning the soup line, who would sometimes look at Alfred with a mixture of disdain and self-importance. Charity, they called it. And while Alfred was grateful to have a square meal a day on the fresh, freezing streets, he'd prefer it if he didn't come with a side of pitting condensation. Condensation. You forgot this. A tug on his elbow brought Alfred back to his senses as, as a young woman from the line pushed a bundle of crackers, an apple, and a few sachets of powder stamped with vitamin supplements. America's Economic Ec Opportunity Commission on the side. For the soup, you won't catch a cold or the flu with that. Thanks, Alfred grunted, pointedly refusing to pick up the vitamins. Don't you have things to be doing? The lady blinked but never broke eye contact with Alfred before replying, This is the right thing to do. Hmm. Cool. God, I wish we could get through this entire focus tree. I doubt we'll be able to because these are too long. Reprimand the police. In penitentiaries, offices, and ac ac academies and cruisers from east to west, the words to serve and protect shine bright when struck by the midday sun. It is a motto which America's, America's police force have chosen for themselves, both a summary of their duties and a pledge of the people at large. For those America's police had sworn to serve and protect, however, their motto rings hollow. In many infamous incidents, they had neither served nor protected the American people. Instead, they've served those with money to acquire their own services and protected the assets which they deeply prize. Securing the backing of the American worker entails ensuring their safety from their own law enforcement that they may not tread upon their rights like they had in the past. Their brutality is one that President Kennedy endeavors to restrain through both talk and action. Dixiecrats will trust us less if we go through with this. This will greatly anger the more hawkish members of the NPP. So be it. Honestly, I'm thinking if I have to, I can rush through some of these. Uh, let's see. Because I, I want to see this stuff done. I want to see Good Night, Sweet Prince. I want to see The Greatest Generation. I really, really do. Because this, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to keep going with the RFK path once we split this campaign into two. With the other one being, of course, Glenn. This stuff doesn't matter. I should not have focused on this stuff at all. I should have focused more on here. That's my fault. But I will do whatever it takes to get down through here. It, even if that means we have to, like, just do focus, like, use console commands to push through these focuses as fast as possible. Because I want to see the Social Security Act. I'm sorry, but with this campaign, after this, I, I'll be honest, I don't want to come back to America for a while because I've, at the time of this recording, I'm playing a bunch of America in TNO. Holy cow. I love it, but. I want to move on to Russia, maybe even China, Japan, Fran uh, maybe not France, maybe Brittany. So, Italy, of course, would be very interesting, with, especially with scores as route. So, Corrupt the Corruptible. They have a massive focus tree as we saw it before. Oh, they finished it. Now they're over here. Corrupt the Corruptible, huh? Friends in the Church. For God. For King. For Italia. Very cool. Uh, what else do we have? I mean, five advanced technical designs. The Iran war is hopefully over. Anything here? Nope. Political landscape. NPP is ready for anything. We're unified, which is good. Let's go ahead and grab some sonars. Because we can. Hmm. Hey, but at least we got a full line going of this. That's not bad. Uh, let's go ahead and grab another one here in Illinois. Let's finish that one up first. Let's, let's keep focusing mostly on civilian factories. The polls are updated. Which, obviously, as I, I said plenty of times before, can't really trust them. So, roads towards justice. Well, we'll ease southern fears eventually, so. I mean, it's looking not too bad. The upper south really doesn't like us. They doesn't really like the MPP at all. But, come on. Come on. Reprimand the police. Alright, let's, well, let's see what happens with that. Because I still want to do... The National Labor Relations Act, which we have to... Was this? Is this a bill? Yeah, it's a bill, so... 
Yeah, you're gonna have to see me use console commands here, which is oh well, maybe not, maybe 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 not. So we'll see what happens. Because we're running out of time. We've got literally one, two and a half months left. Because the new president will be elected on January 23rd. So yeah, I definitely got to use console commands. That's gonna suck. Hmm, I don't like that. I really don't like doing that. I really don't. I'm not too... I'm confident that we can get the center NPP elected again, but I just want to finish this focus tree, man. RFK's police speech backfires. President... Ke well, maybe not then. President Kennedy's recent speech in regards to policing in America has drawn a mixed reaction, to say the least. The documenting of corruption, abuses, racism, and violence by the men in blue from coast to coast has been well received and applauded by civil rights leaders from victims of br police brutality and those that have spent their careers trying to investigate the kickbacks, bribes, property seizures, and more than happens every day. And how police unions protect bad cops and punish those that speak out. But the speech is also outraged from across the nation. Many citizens are considering what the president has said as little more than slander, painting all the cops in the nation based on a few bad apples. Police unions from New York to L.A. are in an uproar denouncing the president and vowing to use the resources to support politicians that actually give a god dang about the police and the public safety. Even the National Progressive Party, RFK, has received major blowbacks. Some in the end, far right NPP have denounced the president, saying that he's not patriotic enough to support the ideas that preserve law and order. Some even shifted their loyalty for the MPP to the Democrats in response. Meanwhile, some members of the CNPP, especially those that are really more concerned about the threat poised from outside the nation about Japan and fascism than with civil rights in America, are moving to the FRNPP camp, thinking that the president has gone too far. All after all, police forces from the FBI to the country sheriffs, or county sheriffs, have been busy trying to root out the dangers of spies and agitators, and it's not helping them have their methods and motives questioned. Needless to say, the speech may have done a lot to expose the bad aspects of the men and a slowly increasing number of women. Who police the nation and their power, but the political cost of Bobby Kennedy could have been much stronger than he could have anticipated. Who will police the police? And the National Relations Act. With Congress convinced and the American people at peace, there's no better time to hold the culmination of our work, money, and time to a vote. The National Labor Relations Act is one of the several proposals coming, comprising what history will consider the most comprehensive piece of economic reform introduced to Capitol Hill. Designed to protect the American worker from severe exploitation of the work, its articles formalize a large expansion of the rights, an eight-day work week, the freedom to join unions, and more. The war on poverty may not even end in our generation or our children's generation or their children's. But we should sound his death knell with his axe enshrinement and announce it to the world that his days are numbered. In a hundred years or a thousand, the American people will celebrate a mission accomplished, take pride in having laid the foundations of the triumph. Um, wasn't that the same thing as this one? May not even end. Oh, exactly the same one. So, all right. So let's take a look at this. We have election going on. I don't care. Here, we probably don't have enough senators, so I'm sorry. I'm going to have to use console commands again to do this. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to look at these things down here because I just want to see if we can complete his focus tree. I'm sorry, like, but since TNO is so narrative driven and much less warfare driven, I think that's okay because we're developing our story here. So if you want to read this, go right ahead. Well, actually, I'll read this one because this is a Social Security Act and, uh, yeah, whatever. With the Congress convinced that in the American people got peace, there's no better time to take hold the accumulation, culmination of our work, money, and time to a vote. The Social Security Act is one of the several proposals comprising what history will consider the most comprehensive piece of economic reform introduced to Capitol Hill since the New Deal era. The establishment of systems aimed to provide monetary assistance to those who cannot provide for themselves, the unemployed, the retired, and the disabled, all managed by a dedicated government agency. The war on poverty may not even end in our generation. Now, this, this is the same thing. In hundreds of thousand years, the American people will celebrate a mission accomplished. Cool. So that's the thing for that. The Dixie Crafts with Trust is left. We will prevent you from taking non-Social Security Act focuses until the Social Security has been sent through Congress. Cool. And the world begins with you. I know many who lament and despair over the state of our country and the, in these uncertain times. They have seen the injustices that ail it, yet cannot fathom how they can treat it. They see within themselves only one man, one woman, facing an unstoppable behemoth, and so raise their arms in frustration and say that nothing can stop. It's onslaught. I disagree. History is replete replete with examples of one changing the lives of many. One priest born to a carpenter in Judea became a figure worshipped by billion souls today. One sailor ventured westwards with some hundreds of his faith, in doing so founding the first of our forefathers' many colonies. One nomad in the steeps of Asia conquered ancient civilizations to found an empire that stretched from Beijing to Moscow. These men alone prove that the actions of a few can forever change the course of history, and that you yourself can bring change to the country. The shape of today's worlds began with them, but the futures then begin with you. Which we get more academic base, instability, and research speed for a year. This one says the greatest weapon against fascism. Since their entry into the Second World War, America has been embroiled in a terrible struggle against the powers of fascism. The Japanese menace looms beyond our allies in the Pacific, and the Nazi Reich continues to crush the once free people of Europe beneath a polished jackboot. 
As tyranny engulfs the world in oppressive shadow, uh, we remain standing, bloody beaten, yet standing against all odds to bear freedom's torch and light a path for those who resist within and without its bounds. Despite what certain warmongers may tell you, despite this struggle cannot be won by force or arms, nor by ruinous race for weapons of mass destruction, indeed, this war is unique among humanity's long history of conflicts that it cannot be won by the once tried and true methods of warfare. Rather, our greatest weapon against the fascist threat is the values and pet principles that long defined Western civilization, freedom, liberty, equality, democracy. Duly applied, applied, these shall become the stony foundations of a healthy and prosperous society built to last the trials of time far better than autocrats and their foundations as quicksand and mud. The extent of the Social Security Act will be expanded. This will cost the support of the bill. This will also raise the cost to maintain the bill. And I, I apologize about this. I mean, I'm reading through the focuses now. There's going to be a few events that I'm, I'm going to go through personally, but I want to at least get through this focus tree. Bridge the political divide. A Republican, Democrat, National Progressive. Whatever the label, one cannot deny that they belong to an American. They all obey the same laws, read the same history, share the same culture with variations from state to state, of course. They speak the same language somewhat, uphold the same values with divergent interpretations, live within the same country, although the state may be its own country, according to some. They may have differences as distinct as night as day, but they sure as sun rises and sets in 24 hours, they are all American and Alabamans and Texans and Californians and blah blah blah. Let us not let these divisions grow to disrupt that greater identity which we all share as a fellow Americans. That path leads to disunion and suffering. Whenever possible, let us reconcile our petty differences in Congress in the spirit of good America. With open arms and a wide smile, with malice towards none, and charity for all. And this is gentle hand, a firm statement. American democracy is built with peaceful dialogue in mind. It gains nothing from proclaiming laws by force and gains everything from simply hearing what the other side has to say. From two diverging opinions emerges a synthesis that is satisfactory to all parties, in turn leading to a consensus that benefits the greater good. This has served us well for 200 years. Petty tyrants and dictators are free to claim violence as their sole domain. This does not mean, however, that we lack the fortitude and will to achieve our own aims. We do employ force, albeit in a more subtle way. Firm words backed by ironclad promises. Gentle hands that lead stray sheep back to the flock. Diplomacy powers the checks and balances on which our nation operates, and the president is not afraid to utilize it for the good of the party and country. And the f another one, everyone deserves a fair chance. Central to the American mythos is the idea that the U.S. is a land of opportunity where anyone can prosper through their own hard work and merit. Millions of our ancestors and their families from a hundred different nations, faiths, and backgrounds have traveled great distances and endured great pains to start new lives with this promise in mind. For some, this country fulfilled their end of the bargain, and so they, they, so they and theirs lived happily thereafter. Sadly, this was not a common occurrence. A great many others lived no different lives from what they had left behind, miserable, pathetic, pauperous. Too many suffered the, the same withering glares they longed to escape, whether for the race, sex, or faith. Too many died with only a gravestone to the name. To our great shame, this land of opportunity favored a select few and left the rest to wail and gnash teeth. President Kennedy aspires to bring America closer to what he had promised. Legislation by legislation, everyone deserves a fair chance that his, in his America informing of them of his efforts will buoy their hearts in anticipation of what will come. And voting the Social Security Act will happen, and a national health care system. Years of planning with coal or hard data to best tailor it to the nation's needs like a beautiful gown and a womanly figure. Tense negotiations in the dead of night, dimp lamp light, and lit cigars illuminating sheets of paper crisscrossed by red ink. Speech after tiring speech in a hundred cities. Thousands of hours drained away to all hardened wills. Turn hearts and so doubt. Few but for the NPP's far-sighted envisioned that the day of our efforts bear fruit will come, yet here it is in its simple... Semp eternal glory. Our past acts have, been, have flirted with, but not quite achieved, the concept of universal health care. Total coverage for all citizens, free of charge. Yet years prior, even with some within the party, with bulk of the costs involved for such a program. Let alone the wisdom of granting free and unrestricted health care paid for by the federal government. But the administration persisted, slowly winning hearts and votes until the National Health Care Act finally stands before Congress, ready to be judged for its worth. If passed, the mechanisms for the most robust universal health care system in the world shall soon be put in place. This is a significant victory for both American democracy and the people it serves. Whatever happens, congratulations for having reached this point. Well, it is what it is. Congress will attempt to pass the National Health Care Act, so I will be right back, in which I will try to do all this so that we can at least complete this part of the focus tree, because I don't know the next time I'm going to be playing as Bobby Kennedy, but oh, we will be right back here together. All right then, my friends, and welcome back. So, as we can see, we, the National Health Care Act passes. I had to use console commands to get there, but yeah, it's okay, it's okay. I just want to make sure that we, you know, we do or have a great RFK run, no matter how much time we may not have. But, they said it couldn't be done. It'll be too hard, it'll be too expensive, it violates our freedoms, it'll never pass Congress. Well, we did it. <clears throat> The National Health Care Act, to be signed by President RFK in a Grand Rose Garden ceremony, is now to be the law of the land. In one of the biggest, most sweeping acts ever undertaken by the federal government, the U.S.'s health care system has been overhauled from the ground up. Every single American will soon experience the benefits of the NHA for the undoubtedly and un unequivocally better. It's a massive law and took a decade or more to realize the full scope, and in the next few months, every hospital in the nation will become the direct property of the state it resides in. The federal government will pay the previous owners for 75% of the value of the land and buildings, while the state provides the other 25%. Every doctor, nurse, pharmacist, 
pharmacist, dentist, specialist, technician, and janitor will be employed by each state's health department of health. For the vast majority of life-saving and life-extending procedures, there will be no direct cost to the patient, instead being paid for ma by a mandatory national insurance plan that will pay for each state for the procedure. All private health insurance plans are to be subsumized, 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 my apologies, by the national system. The NHA has mandated a minimum acceptable level of care for the nation as a whole, but will provide subsidies and payments to every state to ensure that they match or even exceed the minimum standards. Despite the opposition from the fiscal hawks, free market advocates, small government supporters, and the lobbies of the health insurance and healthcare industries, support for the law is widespread across the nation. The harrowing stories of how some have been left destitute due to the medical bills or how some were turned away from the pre preventative treatments due to unavailability, and the many, many allegations of fraud and malpractice shift to public favor in front in favor of the NHA and push many reluctant senators to vote in the favor. Now every American, no matter their race, income, or location of their health care, can and get the care they needed. Cool. <clears throat> so it is December 5th. This is actually after the election has happened. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but we have the greatest generation. And we are cutting it extremely close to the inauguration of the next president, which I'm going to keep secret for now, but you can probably already tell who it's going to be. These few years saw us take risky gambles and hard sacrifices. As it struck with a fever pitch of madness, but at last the reforms have paid off handsomely. Black Americans now see their rights granted, expanded, and now truly protected for the first time. Working Americans now come home every week with more money and better health than the last. Voting Americans will now approach a ballot box as confident that their voice will be heard in the halls of Congress. What no one can fathom that faithful day in 64 has been realized under, in under a decade, enriching the Americans, America's life and freedom like never before. Through our tireless effort, a golden age is just within our reach of our greatest and most blessed generation to claim as theirs. More daily political power, a daring to dream with a new dawn. More political power and stuff like that. Cool. So we still have RFK. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> a Sanders. <clears throat> Actually, we gained two center NPP senators. So, in just in case. There you go. We actually gained two senators. The Republican Party lost three senators, while the Democrats got up to 34. And the far right now has 13. This was a crazy election, I swear to God. Also, I did cut down construction spending to nothing, so... It is what it is. <clears throat> Ooh, even with that, we still have a, a deficit of over 10 billion. Jesus Christ. Other expenditures, 1.3. I mean, we couldn't even make factories anyways. I, I slashed civilian spending. I slashed construction spending. I just wanted a deficit. By this point, if we don't have a deficit, just go back with construction then. And then we'll increase civilian spending as well. So, because we still can't make anything. But I was doing pretty well. We're cut, cutting down the debt. We're under 10 billion, and now we're going to start spending some more. It is what it is, you know. Cool. What do we have? An old friend. Minus 27 days left. Yeah. Especially near the end here, you can start seeing like not everything is polished as the beginning, which is you know it happens. Every mod is going to have difficulties, but still. Yeah. We have only 58 national progressives. And yeah, when I was trying to pass the act, like I, I had to use cost commands. We didn't, did not have enough support to do anything. So, but if I ever do this again, or if you guys try it, go do some of the stuff on the right tree here. Yeah, focusing on civil rights is probably the most important thing to do. And then we can focus on the right a little bit more. Don't do Hawaii, because you can get Hawaii later probably, but we'll see what happens. Also, we still have this to do. Iran and still hasn't changed, so... Good night, sweet prince. The prison may re revel in America's long deserved victory against its own evils, but he does not forget the lives lost and ruined to achieve it. Among the honored dead comes his own brother JFK, John Robert John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Deprived of life by a madman's barrel, he had nevertheless kept America from bleeding further after the goddang dude Nixon tore bloody gashes at its neck. Most importantly, he restored faith in America's de democratic institutions following Nixon, overseeing what would have been a return to normalcy instead. Many believe he would have been what he he would have succeeded and more had tragedy not struck as it had. Jack has always been a vocal believer, or had always been a vocal believer, in doing what was right. No doubt about it, he would have been proud of, proud of Bobby were he alive to see what his little brother had accomplished. The president has scheduled a short trip to his brother's resting place. What will he do there? Only he seems to know. Oh man, it's time to say goodbye. Oh no, no, no. Happy 1973 though, my friends. Uh, do we actually get any factories to use? We actually do. Let's make some more. 20 and 16, cool. We'll, we'll keep it there for now. We're actually getting 0.52 a day. And we've not been assassinated. Good night, sweet prince. Oh my goodness. No, it's too soon. Too soon. One last time. 
The ride to Arlington National Cemetery has become a familiar one to Robert Kennedy. He knew every bump, every stop, every turn of the road that led him to the place where he had celebrated his greatest triumph and dealt with the most devastating defeats. As the guards gave their familiar salute towards a presidential convoy going into the complex, he remained lost in thought, desperately trying to push away what he had come here to do and instead focus on the memories he had made before there. Uh, there before. <clears throat> like that night, Congress passed the Civil Rights Act, having after having to move between heaven and earth to finally deliver the promises of America to so many and had fallen asleep beside him, open bottle, champagne in hand. Those feelings of warmth were the only things that powered him to get out of the car and walk over to the calling flame, but even they couldn't defeat the sense of finality that washed over him as he stopped and finally looked towards where his brother rested. All he could do was simply stare and shiver as the memories of fortitude were replaced by ones evolving Jack, long pushed down by both repression and the strains of governance. <clears throat> the ferociousness of... Uh, Hyannis touch football. The giddiness of him watching the VP nomination. The glow of the undying loyalty as his, as his chief of staff. He wasn't his charismatic, self, secure self anymore. And with all his remaining strength, he took to the note he had held in his clenched fist and laid it down next to the dancing flame. He stared at it. As the feelings of utmost anger, sadness, and loss died down inside of him, abrupt, <clears throat> before abruptly walking back to the limo. Not a word was uttered by the Secret Service as he grasped onto Ethel, as memories of the old faded away and the realization that he had finally made his family legacy whole set in. After years of fighting, scraping, and clawing, he had secured what his brother died for, what he had fought for every single day Ameri every single day since the horrible moment. Tears poured down his cheeks as the limousine drew away and he said goodbye to Arlington for the last time. <clears throat> Dusk fell, an elderly groundskeeper shuffled between the rows of headstones, tidying them, making sure that they would look perfect to the families who would come through those gates in the morning. Checking on the eternal flame, he saw a piece of paper. He picked it up, unfolded it, and pondered the words of a grieving brother's soul finally at peace. Jack, the unfinished business is done. Hmm. Oh, man. Well, we got recon companies. And now we're waiting for the next president. The next president to make a mark on America's history. America Rising. So, friends, Americans, and all those, I stand before you today not only as President of the U.S., but as a symbol of what it stands for. I've always believed that America is and forever shall be the home of democracy, not a hotbed of extremism nor hatred. Now inaugurated, I see myself, my belief was corrected. Today we celebrate not the victory of a single party or ideology, but our freedoms as Americans and freedoms yet to come. For I have sworn both before God and the nation I so dearly love, the same oath our forebearers have taken for centuries. Now, however, in the year of our Lord, 1972, the world is not as it was two centuries ago. Evil powers have grown across the world, and America stands as the only power not to fall on its inexor inexorable march of hatred. I say unto you, America, that we will continue to stand, we will continue to fight for liberty as our forefathers did so long ago. We shall never forget that we were the heirs of the revolution, heirs of freedom's torchbearers. Let the world know that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans, one born of the century, tempered by victory and disciplined through defeat. This generation is proud of its heritage, and as with its predecessor, will continually prove unwilling to allow human rights and civil liberties, to which our nation has always been committed to take away to be taken away from the peoples of the world. Let all foreign and otherwise know that America will support her allies, aid the downtrodden, strike at the evil, all in the defense of liberty. I and all America pledge this. And Jack Jackson, Henry Jackson, inaugurated as President of the United States. Yep. Still, and the center, NPP, has won. It's time to put Japan back in their place. I'll be honest, does he have a unique focus tree? Like, I, no, I don't think so. I think this is the end. This is the end, man. We got Jackson, career... Fighting injustice across the country, huh? A rabid ex anti extremist. He served 30 more, th more than 30 years in politics, huh? Cool, if you want to read about that, go right ahead. He despises the communists of the left NPP and the Yaquis. Huh. He's campaigned on a seemingly anti democratic platform of banning the two parties. The populist, progressive, and moderate political position gives him a unique standing that echoes the progressivism of Theodore Roosevelt. But I think that's pretty much going to be the campaign since we're pretty much. Oh, well, out of a focus tree. Uh, we have no re resolute end to the campaign, which is kind of disappointing. Like, oh, that's it for America for now. But, yeah, that's kind of cool. You know what? Just to see what happens here, because I think these guys are not doing too much. I think you can definitely tell, like I said earlier, that this is basically the end of, you know, the content for Tino. I mean, there's only, like, usually just a decade of worth of stuff for most nations. Maybe except for even, even Borman or... Italy as well. Ottoman Germany. Oh, that's kind of nice. Oh, look at that. They still have content, I guess, to a degree. But, oh, look at that. Ottoman Germany. A bloodstained collar. But, since there's not much else to do, I guess we'll call this one a campaign. I thought we did really, really well. 
It was very interesting. And man, that last event with RFK and JFK. Woo! Woo, that was, that was tough. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed the campaign. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.